But what did he say? We can't solve the problems by using the same kind of thinking we used when we created them. Simple point. The institutions that we live by, government, politics, education, health care, religion, are the cause of today's problems. That we cannot use their thinking to get us out of the problem because their thinking is causing the problem. So what does that leave you with? Evolution is based on these things falling down. That if they don't crash, we won't survive. So the fact is, yeah, look at what's going on. It's falling down and most people are scared to death. It's like, oh my God, it's ending. And I'm thinking, oh man, you got the picture wrong. It's beginning. It's the beginning of a new civilization. What have we learned that we can carry forwards? And what new things can we introduce at this time to change the world and make it more sustainable for us? And the relevance is that process entails that we absolutely give up on the existing situation because it's been the cause of the problem. To make the story very you know, sweet and picture, let me give it to you this way, because the images are the same. Cells are miniature people, whether they're in a human or they're in a caterpillar. And I say, go inside a caterpillar. You've got seven billion cells in that caterpillar. And all the cells have jobs. They're all working. The digestive system is handling all that food that's coming in. The muscles are moving the community around. All the, all the jobs are working, and it's a sustainable place. The environment is going crazy. The economy is going great guns. Everybody's excited, building the system. And then one day, it starts to slow down. Doesn't eat as much. Doesn't move as much. Yeah, but what about all the cells that were in there on that digestive system? Where well, they're looking around going, hey, I got no work, man. There's no work. We're out of work. Holy Jesus, we're out of work. And these people are out of work. And, these are... and all of a sudden, you see what's going on in that caterpillar. That six or seven billion cells are now in chaos because it's like the whole damn thing's falling apart. Many cells actually commit biological suicide, which is called apoptosis. And in this process of all this undoing and this upheaval, they're individual cells that are genetically identical to all the other cells. They're called imaginal cells. And what do they do? They organize the community of cells around them with their new vision. And the imaginal cells create a vision of something much more sustainable than that caterpillar was. They create the butterfly. And the issue is right now, Earth is in terminal caterpillar with us as imaginal cells saying, how can we reconstruct this into a much higher level of organization? It's not the first time this has happened. Civilizations have come and gone. There was first animism, like the Native Americans, the Druids, the uh, Aboriginal people. That civilization crashed when polytheism arose. Polytheism crashed when monotheism arose. Monotheism crashed when the current version called scientific materialism arose. And this one is crashing and the new one is on the process of beginning. It's happened over and over again. So well, what is the responsible agent? How is it caused? Personal beliefs affect your personal life. Mass beliefs affect the entire world. And so where do the beliefs come from? Early on in the game, earliest people knew right away that there was a physical realm and a non-physical realm. And they talked about a spiritual realm and a material realm. And so I'm going to make two gradients. This one a spiritual gradient. If you're down here, you don't believe in spirituality very much. But if you're up here, the darker the color, the more spiritual you find yourself. Believing that spirit is more primary up there. Matter doesn't mean anything. I got another gradient, but it goes the opposite direction. It's called the matter gradient. If you're up there, you don't think matter is really relevant. But if you're down here, matter becomes most important. But I say, okay, put these two gradients together. And when you do that, you get something like this. You get blue down here, which is the material range. You get yellow up at the top, which is the people who believe in spirituality. You get green somewhere in the middle. And I go, okay, guess what? Go back and look at the civilizations, and here's what you'll find. The evolution of civilizations is an evolution of our transit through spiritual and material planes. And how was it based on? Well, it's based on what are called the perennial questions. And what are the perennial questions? And I'm going to go quickly because I know somebody wants to ask questions in seven minutes, and I'm going to go like crazy. Here we go. <laughs> perennial questions have been asked for 10,000 years or more, and they're the questions that are basic ones that said, uh, why are we here? How did we get here? And now that we're here, how do we make the best of it? And you say, okay, cool. What does that mean? Here's the beautiful part. And it goes like this. Whoever answers these questions, how do we get here, why are we here, and how do we make the best of it? But whoever provides answers that we as a population accept, 
we make that entity or that organization a truth provider for our civilization. Whoever we get the answers from, we create a culture based on the answers. And then when we want to know more, we go back to whoever gave us the answers because they're the ones that gave us the truth. And it